Tom, welcome to the World Massage Conference. Thank you very much. We're really, and, we're really happy to have you here, and uh, I'm going to let you get started on your presentation. No, that's great. Thank you very much, Melanie. What I'd like to uh, broach today is a discussion about how we can work with greater ease and improve our treatment outcomes. And that all centers around a discussion about gravity and how gravity has a big influence on the body when the body is lying on a massage table. A key part of what I'll talk about in this presentation today is information based on a research study that indicates that when the human body is lying flat on a treatment table, tension in the body increases. This is due to the imposition of gravity. And I'll share what can be done to position a client on a massage table to bring gravity into play favorably to reduce tension. This research study clearly demonstrates that by positioning clients in a way that considers the anatomy, tension is significantly reduced. And today we'll see that when the client is positioned in ways that favor comfort and release, access to the client's soft tissues is increased as well. Also, we'll see that effort expended by the massage therapist is greatly reduced. And we'll also see that the outcomes are improved. I've been pursuing and exploring positioning for more than 25 years, and my goal here in the next 45 minutes or so is to share what I've found, allowing you a better appreciation for the differences positioning can make in your practice. First, I'll start with some history to explain how I came to appreciate positioning in my work. I've always had an interest in massage from a very early age. And in 1974, I constructed my first massage table. For many years, massage was my avocation, and if you family or friend, you became my subject. After many years of massaging, my life took a turn that allowed me to pursue massage as a vocation. And as I look back, what is interesting to me now is that during all those years of doing massage and receiving massage, I had so readily accepted the discomfort I experienced during massage and also the discomfort I was imposing on my subjects who were receiving massage. I had accepted that being flat on a massage table was simply the position one assumed for massage. Traditionally, that was and still is the standard for receiving massage. During all those many years I had done massage using a massage table, feeling like I was definitely doing it right, as that was, and interestingly, still is, the state of the art. But there was one standout experience for me, a time when something clicked in for me. It was sometime in the early 80s when I went for a massage that I had what turned out to be a life-changing experience. At the beginning of this particular treatment, when I first got on the massage table face down, my back was beginning to tense up. My face was squished into a face rest. My neck was uncomfortably extended. And the therapist, while arranging the draping, asked me, there you go, are you comfortable? And although I wasn't, I lied and said, yes, but I wasn't comfortable at all. Assuming that she was, what she was offering was all that she had to offer, I said, yes, meaning I guess that her asking the question no doubt meant that she was expecting to hear a yes, kind of like when someone asks you, how are you? And although you're stressing over your finances and suffering with the flu, you lie to be courteous and say, I'm fine. So I was being courteous, and I was thinking, this must be about as comfortable as I was going to get. And as I said, I had mild increasing discomfort in my lumbar spine, my cervical spine was uncomfortably extended, and my face was squished into a thinly padded face support. And a thought came to me, this is definitely not comfortable. It's got to get better than this. And another thought came to me, what are we thinking that experience on that flat massage table was very much like other experiences I've had every time I'd had a massage. But this was the first time I recognized that this was a challenge to be addressed. So after that massage table experience, I seriously embraced the challenge of figuring out how to make a massage table more comfortable. And because the flat massage table seemed to be the problem, I perceived that the table itself was the problem that needed to be solved. So I began designing and making massage tables differently in attempts to 
make a truly comfortable table. In 1984, I designed a massage table with numerous ergonomic improvements, both for the client as well as the therapist. This was an ultimate table, I thought. 